Hi, Perception classmates. Um, it's Dan. I'm going to talk to you about the Herman grid and our friend Kiff. I thought I'd do, through, uh, do so through a video because I think it's helpful to present this visually. So I'll just go through the question Professor Emmerich talked or gave us on the exam. Um, so it'll be helpful to have that in front of you as I'm explaining this. Hopefully, I could do so well. Um, so the first thing that um, we're given is that um, Kif has off-center on surround ganglion cells. Now ganglion cells are part of our receptive field. Our receptive field is um, the space in our sensory neurons that will fire with the presence of a stimulus. That's a receptive field, so they receive sensory stimulus. So for the visual receptive field, there's cells that tell our brain, yes, there's light, no, there's no light, whatever. Um, so for this um, question, we need to know about retinal ganglion cells. Retinal ganglion cells, um, basically their job is just to detect contrast and edges. Now they do so um, through um, having two circles. They have an inside circle and an outside circle. Their inside circle is going to fire to the brain that there's light if there's light in the middle. The outside is n going to inhibit a response if there's light on the outside. So that's for an on-center uh, ganglion cell. So if you're looking at the middle of a piece of paper, there's going to be a mild response because um, the middle is saying is firing to the brain, yes there's light, but this is inhibiting um, information to the brain so in that way, you get a mild response, and therefore, there's no contrast in the middle of a sheet of paper. The same thing is with the off-center cell. It is going to inhibit a response to the brain and going to fire a response if there's light on the outside. So the same thing in the middle of the paper. The inside is going to inhibit. The outside is going to fire. It's going to counteract each other. And you're not going to get a wild, crazy response to the brain saying that there's a contrast. But if I put my hand over these three arbitrary units of activation or um, inhibition here, and there's going to be less inhibition from the outside because it's detected this um, darkness here. And the um, inside can fire a lot more and tell the brain that there is contrast because this is firing more than it was before. The same thing is with an off-center cell. If I cover this up, there's a whole lot more contrast here. Um, so with the Herman grid illusion, because these two can say the same thing to the brain, that there is X amount of contrast, the first, the answer to the first question, would Kiff experience the Herman grid illusion in the same way that humans would? Yes, he would, because off-center surrounds cells, so he only has off-center. Um, that would give the same information as if he were to have both, that there's X amount of contrast within the Herman grid illusion. Um, so explain what his perception would be and why it would be the same as ours because off-center cells um, give the same information as on-center cells as, in regards to how much contrast there is. Um, so the next thing that uh, Professor Emmerich gives us is that um, Kiff has large receptive fields in the fovea and small ones in the periphery. So I'll flip the page over and here's our Herman grid. So um, for receptive fields, uh, for humans, us, we have small um, receptive fields in our point of focus, that is in our fovea. And in our periphery, we have large receptive fields. So KIF has it backwards. So in our point of focus, um, you notice that our receptive fields are so small that they um, don't overlap with 
the grid at all. And we have the same amount of contrast with all five of these um, cells. So we don't get that little blotch in the middle of the grid. But with our periphery, we have large receptive fields. And that's how the grid works. We have large receptive fields. So in the middle here, where the grids cross, we have X amount of firing. But on the outside, we only have these little corners here on the outside, right here, here, telling the brain um, it can only inhibit so much response. Here, where the lines do not cross, there's a whole lot more darkness, so there's a lot more contrast. So we can tell the brain that there's that amount of contrast, but here um, we don't get the same amount of inhibition. So that's where the splotch comes in in our periphery, but not in our point of focus. So with Kif, he has these large receptive fields on um, his fovea, his point of focus. So he would have these splotches in his point of focus, whereas his periphery has these small receptive fields, which are nicely detailed. So in his periphery, there would be um, no splotches. So now the answer changes. So if Kiff had large receptive fields in the fovea and small ones in the periphery, his perception of the Hermann grid illusion would be the opposite of ours. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, you could comment. And all the best on this exam.